Hey everybody, it's Kevin. Old Kevin from Hats and Guitars, JJ Hat Center employee for 25 years. And um, I'm here today to talk to you about a couple of things. Um, about your fedoras, your Stetson hats, and other and other brands too. Um, they all kind of work the same way. Uh, snap brim hat is a snap brim hat. You know, whether it's ladies, men's, soft, stiff, uh, wool for one brand or the next brand, it doesn't matter. A snap brim's a snap brim. Now, first thing is there is a curve to the brim. The curve is called the flange. Now you hear me talking about preserve the curve a lot. Now that's what you want to do. Keep this curvy like that. When you see that, that's a healthy hat, okay? That curve allows you to do what you want. If you're an up guy, it looks good up. If you're a down guy, that acts as the pivot point for you to dip your brim down, tilt it, do a cool over the eye kind of thing, get you a whole roll, you know, whatever you want to do. If you want to do some kind of jazzy guys and dolls thing, you know, some kind of weird down on the side thing, whatever. It allows you to control it. You see that pivot point? It's keeping. Huh? That's the control. Okay? Without that flange, that curve, you can't really do much. It just falls and that's it. Okay? So, if you want a good down, you have to have a good up. Okay, one way is to keep it boxed correctly. Inside of the box, there's a ring, okay? The ring sits inside of a little hole. There's a hole, a little uh, like that, okay? Then there's a cardboard ring that sits inside of it. It's about that high or so. The ring goes in, put the ring in, the hat is elevated on the ring, and the brim, there's air under the brim. Of course, the ring is elevating it up, okay? It keeps it from moving around, but the brim is not flat on the surface of anything. It's up in the air, okay? So that's good. The other way is keeping your hat upside down like this. Brim flipped up, invert the hat, like that, just keep it upside down. Um, a dust cover like this is good. If you don't have one, you can make it. Any kind of plastic bag is good as long as you don't tie it. Don't tie the ends or seal the ends, okay? The thing has to breathe. So tuck it, that's it. Just tuck it in the ends and you're good. What that does is it keeps the dust off your hat and when you put it on, it looks brand new. There's no dust at all. Um, keeping it in the box alone will not, if somehow the dust gets in the box, you know, there are little holes or something, moths could get in there or whatever, this is, this is a little bit better. But again, do not tie the bag. If you tie it, you're gonna, you get the mold, the mildew, things start to grow in there, like, uh, whatever, vegetation, and it's not good. Uh, so, plastic is good if you're scared of any, you know, mold or whatever, just, just cut it and just cover the top. That's all you need to do. Cut the bottom of a shopping bag off, cut it off, and then just use it as a dust cover for the top, you know. Tuck it in just a little bit or something, you know. And upside down like that. But you don't need a big bag. Um, anything will do. And um, you can skip this step, that's all right. Just get yourself some packing tape, a roll of uh, you know, the tape that you use to seal boxes, the brown stuff, the clear stuff, make little rings and just pat your hat down, get the dust off. Okay, here's something. Dusty hats plus rain is a no-no. So you don't go outside in the rain or snow if your hat is dusty because precipitation mixes with the dust and makes a film, kind of like a mud. And that's when you see these black hats, they're kind of gray looking and they're just not black anymore. It's a combination of that and the sun fading. Uh, a lot of sun, you know, many, many, many years of heavy sun will make a black hat look, you know, gray or green or something. It lightens colors, makes them le less vivid. One way to tell is you just peel back the bands. You look underneath. You see if that's even. Is there any difference or is it the same? You 
tell if it's faded or not because it doesn't fade under the band, you know? Um, yeah, okay, so let's talk a little bit further. Take your hat out of the box, okay? Now, um, my hat has a center crease pinch front, so there's two pinches. You can see them. It starts about halfway down. And there is a crease up on the top, just a regular center crease, as if somebody just went like that. That's all it is. It has a particular look. Um, it's a factory crease, but that's basically all it is. It's, you know, if you had an open crown hat like this, went like that, it's a regular old crease. Pinches, same thing. These are factory pinches. There's, you know, maybe two fingers in between the two pinches there. Very easy to tighten the pinch if you want to. You just tighten it. You're good, you know. As long as you're not pinching it really, really hard, it's not permanent. As long as you're not doing it while it's wet and letting it dry that way. You're good. Open it up. Tight pinch is gone. Okay. Making your pinch tight is very easy. That's all you have to do. Snap your brim down. Let's talk about snapping it. Okay. When you snap, you're going to grab it from the center. You're flipping down. Okay. And you go as far as you can so you run out very light hands. I'm not pushing, I'm just kind of flipping. I flipped it over and I'm just using my fingers to allow it to all flip up, down. Now you can do it one way. It's harder for me to do that. I like to go outwards. Okay. Then center the hat. The two pinches right here should be right to the center of your nose. Center your hat. Bring this as far as you can and then give it a tilt. Pull it one ear. You got it. So now you're centered, you're tilted, you're doing good. Okay? Now, the wind cord will sometimes rise up. Some people will have that on their hats, some people not. Uh, European companies do it a lot. Custom companies do it. It's something that we can ask for or not ask for, depending on if we want a company to include it. Just like a logo there, you know? They'll, they'll actually charge for those things, you know, it'll be like a dollar or two for, you know, this, or five dollars for that, and all these little things, you know, putting our logo here, and the lining, they all add up. The wind cord tends to, to ride up. It's something it all, they all want to do this. So what you want to do is just take your finger, get it under, okay? If that's not working, you need to take your band, and raise your band up a little, okay? Push it up. You see that? I made a little space under there. Get the get that in there, and then karate chop the band back down. It needs to lay in a space, so push the band up, grab it, put it in the slot. Look at it. Tightening it. It's going to be pulling it one way. It makes it more taut. The other way, it's going to give it more slack. Okay, the idea is you take this thing off. It's like a slip knot. And while you're wearing your hat, this is supposed to go through your lapel buttonhole like that. So if you lose it, you know, it doesn't go uh, down the block. It doesn't get ran over by a car, this and that. These wind cords can confuse a lot of people. Um, they tend to ride up a lot and they get tangled and people just don't know what to do with them sometimes. If you don't like your wind cord, just, just cut it off. You know, you could get rid of it really easily. I personally don't like them that much, but at this point, I don't know. I just don't want to change the hat. I think everything stopped, everything original. And that, that pleases me. I like that. 
I like when everything is there. Even the tag I left on this time. Um, but um, another thing I did is I aerated this hat with these special, uh, I think you can see the little starbursts. You see it there? Look at that starburst pattern. That's an old vintage machine, very old. It's a big cast iron. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys are, are plumbers out there. If, if you, you know what a pipe threader looks like, it's like a big, like an steel machine that sits on the ground with like a big lever almost looks like a well one of those pump wells it's like that and you're pressing down on this big steel lever machine that sits on the floor real heavy and it's got spikes metal spikes very strong ones too and um it spikes the hat so i did it in the front here there you go front on the side back, kind of, on the other side, got one there too, and I took out my lining, it's finished on the inside too, that's classy, it's all pounced on the inside, the felt is finished, even though it was covered by a lining pretty much all the time. But I take my linings out when I work in my hats because, um, you know, I'm hustling up and down the stairs all day and uh, those heavy linings get a little bit heavy. I start sweating. So when I pull it out and I have the aeration, um, there's actually, there's a little difference. I can feel some air coming in there and stuff. And it's a light hat. These are very, very light. Um, talk a little bit more about my hat. I have a pad in the front. This is uh, from the JJ Hat Center catalog. These are used to uh, reduce the size of hats when you put them underneath your sweatband. But they're also used on top of the sweatband against your forehead to block perspiration. So in other words, when sweat hits your hat, it never touches your hat. It hits this pad and stops. So no perspiration ever gets on this hat. Um, there are a lot of good sides to them. It keeps your hat lasting. You know, like if you're going to sweat through a hat, let's say five years of working at JJ's, this will make your hat last 20 years, 30 years, 40, much more. Except the downside is this stays wet. So when there's leather against your head, you can just take a hanky, dry it, boom, you're fresh again. With this, it stays wet, so it feels a little irritating, you know, it's wet, it's sweaty, you take it off, you dry it off, you put on your hat and it's wet with your perspiration. So it's not always the freshest feeling and eventually you have to change it because, you know, this stuff grows there, bacteria or whatever, so, you know, every once in a while you got to peel them off and change it and put another one in its place. But um, they're not that expensive, and um, there comes a point where that's all you can do. You gotta do it. I don't like to put them on at the beginning of the hat's life because I like to have the leather against my head. It's much more comfortable and sanitary to me. Um, but when I start to see the first sign of sweat peeking through, like a little stain there, you see that? Okay, I know that it's too late. The, the band is already soaked up, enough sweat. The leather band has, you know, run its course. It's all saturated. It's run its course. The only thing I could do is put one of these cat band new sweatbands in there. Um, they're five bucks at JJ's. You know, they're half price for us. We pay two fifty for them as an employee. But um, five is not that bad. You know, if you could use maybe two of them in a the summer or something, um, you could get them a little cheaper on Amazon. I think if you buy them like by the box, but you know, then it becomes this big purchase and stuff. So, um, yeah, you know, we have them. I don't even think you pay shipping. I think we just stick it in, like, in an envelope and mail it to you, like a letter. There might be zero shipping for that. But um, you just basically go to the JJ website, jjhatcenter.com, um, and you go to the end, and there's a little accessory section. Accessories, sweatband. It's called sweatband, five bucks. You know, you get a few of those. Two or three of them will do you. Um, it does tighten up your hat a little, so what you can do is you could cut them, you 
can take, instead of like the 12 inch piece, you cut the ends off of them, you make it like seven inches long, and you use less. That'll tighten up your hat very little. Um, the other thing is, like I said, use it at the end of your hat's life, not at the beginning, when your hat's already stretched out and stuff, and it's not gonna make a big deal. It won't tighten it up that much. Um, or you can be like me and just buy your hats big. Um, I always go a little bit big because I I know that stuff's going to happen. I'm going to have to put a sweatband in it. Um, eventually I'm going to want more room. So instead of going for the smaller size, I go a little big and I pat it down. Um, you know, within reason. So it's like this. If you're between sizes, round up. You know, if you're 28.2, just go for 29 inches. You know, if you're a, a 58 point three centimeters go for 59 um, round up never count on something stretching if you think um, you could buy something a little bit small because it's a cool vintage hat and then have it stretched no nah, you can't do it the, the whole thing just doesn't work it doesn't sit right they don't look right when they're bending like this they feel terrible when you get this line on your head you know and you know it's like a red line and it's uncomfortable. You just don't want to wear it and the hat sits home. Then you wind up ripping the sweatband out because that's the only thing you could do. Because stretching just screws the whole hat up and barely works at all. So, you know, you can clip the reed, you can stretch it, but uh, that only works so much. So, go big, go big. Uh, that's about it, guys, I think. Uh, I wanted to just talk a little bit about my hat, you know. There's always different edges and stuff. Um, this is a bound edge. Binding uh, does not add strength to the brim. That's just a, uh, a myth. Although a welted edge will add a little strength, I think. Uh, a bound edge and a raw edge will both uh, screw up just as easily. So, yeah, there you go. It might stay a bit cleaner or something, you know, but I guess it depends on what color the binding is. It could be light also, you know. Alrighty. So, put my hat back in plastic. Back in the old uh, dust cover. The hat ring. Back in its box. Weekend, all right. Take care of that family. Take care of yourself. Pull out Daisy's yoke for this one.